the twelve impediments of the Catholic marriage. According to the Code of Canon Law 1983, A man cannot validly enter marriage before the completion of his sixteenth year of age, nor a woman before the completion of her fourteenth year. Canon 1083 Section 1 The First Age The Codex states that the minimum legal age for a marriage is male, 16 years, female, 14 years. In this case, the Codex looks at the extent to which the candidate who wants to marry has reached physical maturity and also the ability to express his consensus, natural law. The Codex in addition to providing a minimum age for the universal church, also provides greater discretion in each particular church. Antecedent and perpetual impotence to have sexual intercourse, whether on the part of the man or on that of the woman, whether absolute or relative, by its very nature invalidates marriage. Canon 1084 Section 1 The Second the impotence The definition of impotence in relation to marriage is the inability to perform actus conjugalis, copulation. This can happen to both men and women. To invalidate a marriage, the impotence must be perpetual, id est, incurable, and antecedent to the marriage. The impotence can either be absolute, id est, with regard to any person of the opposite sex, or relative, id est, with regard to the specific person of the spouse. A person bound by the bond of a previous marriage, even if not consummated, invalidly attempts marriage. Canon 1085 Section 1 the third previous marriage previous marriage also known as the impediment of the liga men referring to the bond of the previous marriage whether conducted in the catholic church in another church or ecclesial community or solely in terms of civil law any previous marriages by either party wishing to marry again must be declared null before a wedding can take place in the Catholic Church. This is irrespective of the religion of the party previously married. If a prior marriage cannot be declared null, no new marriage is possible. The reason for the marriage bond in question is that the marriage bond prevents someone from having a second marriage. The direction of this marriage bond becomes relevant if, Previously there was a legal marriage, no longer living together but not yet officially divorced. The legal marriage still exists, currently there is still a legal marriage. The existence of this marriage bond barrier confirms the recognition of a monogamous marriage. A marriage is invalid when one of the two persons was baptized in the Catholic Church or received into it and has not by a formal act defected from it, and the other was not baptized. Canon 1086 Section 1 The Fourth Disparity of Cult Disparity of Cult, in other word interfaith marriage Marriage between two persons, one of whom has been baptized into the Catholic Church or accepted into it and has not left it by formal action, while the other has not been baptized, is invalid. A marriage between a Catholic and a non-baptized person is invalid unless a dispensation is granted by the local ordinary, usually the bishop.
Those who are in sacred orders invalidly attempt marriage. Canon 1087 The Fifth Holy Orders One of the parties has received sacred orders, deacon, priest, or bishop. This impediment is of ecclesiastical law and may only dispensed by the apostolic see, in Rome. Those who receive the ordination of diaconate, deacon, priesthood, priest, and episcopate, bishop, become an obstacle to being able to accept their legal marriage. Those who are bound by a public perpetual vow of chastity in a religious institute invalidly attempt marriage. Canon 1088 The Sixth Perpetual Vow of Chastity Like holy orders, religious life cannot be lived together with married life, because a religious person is bound by a vow of chastity. One of the parties has made a public perpetual vow of chastity as a monk or religious sister or in some other form of consecrated life. An illegitimate marriage with a person who is bound by a public and eternal vow of chastity. Public in nature means The vow is accepted by the rightful leader and the leader acts on behalf of the church. Eternal means the vow is accepted for life and declared in a religious institution. This impediment is of ecclesiastical law and may only dispensed by the apostolic see. No marriage can exist between a man and a woman who has been abducted, or at least detained, with a view to contracting a marriage with her unless the woman, after she has been separated from her abductor and established in a safe and free place, chooses marriage of her own accord. Canon 1089 The Seventh Abduction One of the parties has been abducted for the purpose of contracting marriage. Abduction becomes a hindrance if the abduction has the intention to marry that person. Barriers to abduction or detention are established to ensure the freedom of the woman, who has the right to marry without any coercion. Free will is an absolute requirement for the validity of the marriage agreement. One who with a view to entering marriage with a particular person, has killed that person's spouse, or his or her own spouse, invalidly attempts this marriage. Canon 1090 Section 1 The Eighth Crime One or both of the parties has brought about the death of a spouse for the purpose of entering marriage with each other. This impediment is of ecclesiastical law and may only dispensed by the apostolic see. By establishing crime as an obstacle to marriage, the church wants to protect the sanctity of marriage and the church also wants to protect human dignity, life. Marriage is invalid between those related by consanguinity in all degrees of the direct line, whether ascending or descending, legitimate or natural. Canon 1091 Section 1 The Ninth Consanguinity The parties to the marriage are close blood relatives. Another term for this hindrance is inbreeding. Inbreeding is a form of marriage performed by those who still have a direct relationship, namely the one-line relationship, parents' children, grandparents' grandchildren, or collateral line, marriage with nephews or marriage between cousins. The relationship between, for example, a father and daughter, or grandparent and grandchild, 
is known as the direct line of consanguinity. Marriage is always prohibited in the direct line. The relationship between first cousins would be known as the collateral line of consanguinity. Marriage is prohibited up to and including the fourth degree on the collateral line. Degrees are calculated easily by counting the number of persons between one relative and another and including both relatives. For example, a first cousin is the fourth degree, a woman, her father, her father's sister and that sister's son. An aunt is the third degree, the person, the mother, the mother's sister. A second cousin would be the fifth degree, and so marriage to a second cousin would not be prohibited whilst marriage to an aunt or first cousin would be invalid. Affinity in any degree of the direct line invalidates marriage. Canon 1092 The Tenth Affinity Affinity refers to the direct line whereby the two persons are not related by blood, but are legally related as the result of a valid marriage. For example, a woman may not marry her stepfather or her mother's stepfather. Affinity is created when two families bring the boundaries of family relations closer together through marriage that occurs between members of the two families. So, affinity relations arise as a result of an external factor, marriage ties, not an internal factor, blood ties. The impediment of public propriety arises when a couple live together after an invalid marriage or from a notorious or public concubinage. It invalidates marriage in the first degree of the direct line between the man and those related by consanguinity to the woman, and vice versa. Canon 1093 The Eleventh Public Propriety Whilst affinity is calculated on the basis of a valid marriage situation, the impediment of public propriety is based on cohabitation. If it is publicly, or notoriously, known that two people live together, marriage is prohibited only in the direct line and only in the first degree. For example, a man may not marry the daughter of his female partner born to her from a previous liaison, whether marriage or not. There are three points about this public eligibility impediment. First, this impediment arises from an illegitimate marriage, namely a marriage carried out according to the confirmation system required by law, but becomes invalid for certain reasons, for example, a defect in the confirmation system. Second, this impediment also arises from publicly known concubines. A concubine is a man and a woman living together without marriage or at least having a permanent relationship to have intercourse even though they do not live together in the same house. Concubinates are said to be public if they are easily known by many people. Third, the impediment of an illegal marriage relationship in a straight line level one between a man and a person related to the woman is the opposite. Those who are legally related by reason of adoption cannot validly marry each other if their relationship is in the direct line or in the second degree of the collateral line. Canon 1094 the twelfth. Adoption. Adoption is a legal act whereby a person is recognized as the child of an adopted person, and the legal act must be carried out officially by following the provisions of civil law. Thus, between the person who raised it and the foreigner, a legal relationship, based on law, 
emerged, not natura, natural. Those who are legally related by reason of adoption cannot validly marry each other if their relationship is in the direct line or in the second degree of the collateral line. For example, if a married man and wife adopt a daughter, the man may not marry his adopted daughter's sister nor, of course, his adopted daughter. Thus, the Twelve Impediments of the Catholic Marriage According to the Code of Canon Law 1983 May be useful. God bless us all.